<laughs> Seeing a presence of a quorum, I call the uh, region as uh, regional school committee to order and consider. Sorry. Um, and uh, consider entering executive session in accordance with open meeting law MGLC 30A, section 21A, pursuant to purpose two, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, Michael Morris, with plans to return to open session. I need a roll call vote. Uh, Spitzer, aye. Gemling, aye. McDonald, aye. Stancer, aye. Fonch, aye. Bonino, aye. We're in executive session. <laughs> and uh, seeing the presence of a quorum, I'll call this meeting of Union 26 to order at 6.33 uh, and consider entering executive session in accordance with open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A, pursuant to Purpose 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, Michael Morris, with plans to return to open session. And roll call vote starting. Menino, why? Stancer, aye. Hall, aye. McDonald, aye. Demling, aye. And we are in executive session. Um, so uh, I call the uh, the meeting of, of the regional committee back to order. And I call Union 26 back to order. Okay. And with that, um, we're moving on to public comment. Um, if you, if there's members in the audience that would like to speak, please come forward. Um, we didn't do a sign-up sheet this time, but I'll just remind everybody we have um, three minutes. We have the helpful timer here so that you can keep track of when, how much time you have left. Um, and please, when you come forward, please state your name um, before you start speaking. Thanks. to comment very briefly on uh, the superintendent's contract, uh, which I hope is uh, voted on tonight. Um, and I wanted to talk about two things. The first is how important I think it is for our schools to have consistent leadership, uh, both as a school committee, but, but certainly as a superintendent. Um, I think uh, Dr. Morris has really led all the districts through some very challenging times, uh, budget issues, um, uh, academic things, and I think he's done a really remarkable job. Um, and I want to speak specifically to his tenacity around the statement of interest for uh, a new elementary school building in Amherst. Um, he led us through a process that didn't end up working out for Amherst in the past. And um, I am very, very uh, appreciative that Dr. Morris has stuck with it and um, helped lead the town through a very inclusive process with the aid of the Amherst School Committee um, so that we are now invited back into the process. And I'm really excited about that. And I think a tremendous amount of credit goes to Dr. Morris. So I just wanted to say that tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Brian Scully and my daughter goes to Fort River. Uh, I'm going to read this because my memory isn't as good as it used to be. Um, I'm here tonight to support the second chance we all now have for our new elementary school and to support the person who worked so hard to bring all the sides of the new school application process together, Superintendent Mike Morris. Dr. Morris is a very good superintendent, and he was a very good principal at Crocker Farm. Uh, and when all is said and done, he, at his heart, is still a very good teacher. And he's taught us all on both sides of the previous school issue, me especially, uh, that we needed to come together this time and respect each other's questions, suggestions, and criticisms to make the second chance work for our kids. Mike has done that by example in the way he treats others who have questions or criticisms of him. And he probably receives more than his share of questions and criticisms, some fair, some not, some polite, some not, some true, some not. Superintendent Morris has taught us how to interact with each other by being respectful to all, even when he has not always been accorded that same courtesy. 
never questioning the motives of or, or intentions of the people who question his as he works at the most difficult job in town. President Theodore Roosevelt wrote something that made me think of the difficult job that Mike Morris does for us. It's called the arena. It is not the critic who counts, not the man or woman who points out how, strong, how the strong man or woman stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man or woman who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his or her place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Superintendent Morris deserves our thanks for what he's accomplished for our children and continues to try to accomplish, like building them a badly needed new school. I'm almost done. <laughs> and as importantly as the school, he's, he's continuing to build a diverse group of caring teachers that will work in all of our schools trying to make sure that every child experiences a teacher that looks and sounds like that child. Because Mike Morris knows that teachers, second only to parents, are the first real role models that our children ever encounter. Superintendent Mike Morris is our man in the arena, daring greatly to heal our past divides and bringing us together by teaching inclusiveness and empathy, not only to our children, but to us so that we all someday may share in the triumph of having built our kids that new elementary school and making us a better town for having done it together. Thank you, Superintendent Morris. Thank you. Well, I have much less to say than that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, you said all the good stuff. No, my name is John McCabe. Um, I, uh, my daughter goes to Crocker Farm. And uh, I just want to say thanks, Mike, for all the hard work that you've been doing. And thanks to all of you guys, really. Um, in my humble opinion, there's no higher calling than public service. I've been a public servant since I first started working. I worked at City University. Now, as a retired guy, I, I teach at the local community college. I help keep tuition low. <laughs> they don't pay me anything. But, with, but I'm proud to do it, and it's fun to do. Um, and it's just, you know... I know you guys are doing this under such unpleasant circumstances, but just know there's a lot of people in town who really care about you and really love you. And keep up the good work. Hi, I'm Deb Leonard. I have two children in the school system, one at Fort River and one in the high school. I actually am not here to talk about the school building project. I'm, I'm here to revisit my passion for um, the math program. And I just have to say how thrilled I am that my 10th grader is now in an appropriate uh, math program. I think that process was difficult. I think they had a lot of stakeholders, a lot of different opinions, a lot of need. I appreciate both the manner in which it was done. I appreciate the, the consensus building. I appreciate bringing Jeff Friedman along. I think it was really done in a, in a way that, in retrospect, looks nice and clean, but it wasn't clean at the time. And as with most things that develop, um, it had a lot of different twists and turns to it. But uh, ultimately, my, I'm not in a position where I feel the need to supplement my children's um, math programs over the summer, and that's, that's huge. That's huge for me, it's huge for my kids, it's huge for my family, but it's huge for all the families in, in the district so that those families that aren't able to do that themselves don't find them, their, their children at a disadvantage with a program that was poorly matched for their needs. So <coughs> thank you. Any other comment? We 
we'll move on then to um, our new and continuing business, um, which are which is our main purpose for tonight. The um, we are looking at uh, or discussing the proposed contract for Superintendent Mike Morris's um, contract. Um, and just as a reminder, um, we this is a continuation of or or bring it coming back into um, open meeting the conversation that we started back in September. Um, if uh, for those of you who have been tracking at home, and for those who haven't, we met in September and talked about um, the 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 timing of of the renewal of the contract and that. Um, best practices um, ar around the state and the region, the country, frankly, um, uh, is to not let a superintendent enter the final year of their contract without having um, some uh, feedback or extension of their of their current contract. So um, in September, we had that discussion um, at the region meeting with um, Union 26 about whether we wanted to do that, and we did make that decision that we wanted to enter this um, negotiation. Um, and we mapped out our timeline. Um, and so here we are after three months of executive session discussing the contract um, and negotiations that between, um, led by Eric Nakajima, who could not be here tonight, um, and Peter Demling um, for Union 26 in, um, connect in uh, coordination with uh, Dr. Morris on that. So in our packets, we have our um, our latest contract um, includes uh, the changes that we discussed at our last executive meeting. Um, Mr. Demling, is there anything you want to add that I may have left off? I, I think that's a that's a really good overview. Um, you know, um, just trying to thumbnail sketch um, the sort of intro comments that Chair Nakajima had at that September open meeting when we were talking about the schedule. I think one of the other observations was that. Um, uh, in, in addition to the years that have already been served on the current contract, uh, Dr. Morse was interim uh, superintendent for a year, and so now we, we have over three years of, of Dr. Morse in, in this position. So the, the feeling, uh, as, as I recall from the committee, was that we have enough data to be able to uh, discuss what the next step is, you know, whatever that next step uh, was. And I feel like um, I feel like the, the, the three months, um, in, in some ways, felt like it went by quickly. On the other, on the other hand, when I, when I think about the individual discussions, they were very detailed, and uh, there was a lot of, of back and forth. And um, I feel like the, the, the contract that we uh, landed on is a good representation of all those discussions um, and uh, is, is a lot better for our having had take, taken the, the time. Uh, and so having started early, we were able to really delve into it. So I feel like that, that was a good process. Um, so I'm just going to go around and, and let give every one of us the opportunity to speak um, uh, on, on this contract and the process, and I'll start with Mr. Menino. Okay. Um, it gives me great pleasure to enthusiastically endorse this contract renewal. During my past three years, Mike Morris's performance has been exemplary. He effectively served the interests of students, faculty and staff, and members of the community. Approval of this contract will ensure that the schools are in good hands in the future. Um, I agree. I wholeheartedly support the um, extension of Dr. Morris's um, contract for another three years. Um, few of us have an opportunity to display our talents and skills in the public sector. Um, Mr. Morris, Dr. Morris does have that opportunity, and in doing so, he has gained the respect, admiration, and support of the entire community. And that's a hard thing to accomplish, but you've done it, Dr. Morris, and you've done it very successfully. And I might add that you've done it with a patience and a strength that is not only an example for us sitting around this table, but I think also for our kids. You've had to put up with a lot of slings and arrows, and you've done it um, in a very mature, appropriate, and courageous way. And I thank you and salute you. Um, as a member of the Pelham School Committee for two years, the, and the Regional and Union 26 committees this year, um, I would like to say that I enthusiastically support the renewal of Mike's contract. And making myself some notes, um, things that are important to me 
are his calm demeanor. I have never seen him in a meeting or any place get riled up, which I think is really important when you're in front of the public all the time. Um, consistent leadership, I think, that he's displayed in the time that I've been involved. Um, he is very collaborative with his regional peers, and he advocates with that group strongly for public education. And for those of us in Western Massachusetts, I think that that is really important. Um, we need the voice, and when you get everybody together, and I think Mike takes a, a leading role in that, it, it really makes a difference. And the other thing I would say is um, his positive attitude and even enthusiasm a very difficult job. So thank you. Ms. Hall? Yes, it's hard to think of something original. I <laughs> wholeheartedly agree. Um, and I think other than demeanor, all of which is important, I think for Pelham specifically, the evaluations speak for themselves. They are consistently very strong. And I think having that consistency going forward is so important for us. We are a much smaller portion of the job, but we are never treated like an afterthought. And I think mm -hmm. having this type of really, really strong leadership for a tiny school up the hill is really important for us. So, um, I agree. It's really hard to add anything new to the things that have been said, not just by the committee, but also by the members of the community that have spoken already. Um, so I've been on the committee for a year and a half, not quite two years, and, um, and but obviously a parent in the district for many years um, before that. And so I also wholeheartedly support and enthusiastically um, support um, the extension of your contract. Um, I think I've said this before during um, when... Uh, during evaluations is one of the things that really stands out for me is, and, and it's been mentioned before, is is the the calm candor with which you take feedback, both um, mm. positive as well as critical <coughs> feedback. And I, I think um, you know, several folks have mentioned that as well. Um, and regardless of who it's coming from and what format it's coming to you, um, you take it all and and you know, there is a saying that feedback is a gift, and I think you even the critical feedback you do take as a gift um, and incorporate that in your actions going forward. And I, I don't, I think that is one of the single most attributes or characteristics that is needed in any position, but especially in a job as difficult as superintendent of our districts. <laughs> um, and just working with you on the various working groups and, and community feedback, one of the other things that really stands out for me is is, is not just a willingness, but an absolute desire to get input and, and opinions mm -hmm. from a broad, you know, everybody in the community. Um, you are constantly telling us, the committee, as well as the community, to slow down to make sure that we're thinking through the process. You were just saying that moments ago with the middle school grade span advisory board. Um, and, and it's, it's, you know, holding us back when we're eager to move forward is, is challenging because it, we're <laughs> we have lots of energy. Um, but I, I, I think it's a testament to, to who you are and how, how important that is to you to make sure that we're hearing all voices and integrating that into our plans going forward. Um, and then just building on the, the, the strength of consistent leadership. Um, I think that's super important. And we are grateful and fortunate to have that with you and I look forward to continue working with you. Yeah, this is this is the the curse of going later and later is that the, <laughs> the, um, the ability of things to say is, is shorter and shorter. Um, so generally speaking, you know, when we think about uh, the school committee's role and responsibility, I, I, I think of hiring, retaining, evaluating, working with the superintendent is, is close to the top of the list of our responsibilities. and. Um, I think, it, in gen generally speaking, again, it, it's it's pretty hard to find a good superintendent, and I th all the more challenging still with a a, a three district combo, such as ours, mm -hmm. that that is significantly above average in terms of complexity, and and I would say also above average in terms of its its demanding nature, um, not of just of the work, but of the of the community. And you know, I say that as a as a, a a two-sided compliment. A demanding community is both a positive and a negative. And <laughs> I think at, at the end of the day, we feel that's a positive balance, which is why we choose to live here and serve here. Um, so you know, so to find someone who can work in this position for a number of years is 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 difficult. Um, and so when I look at the, at the quantitative 
data that we now have after three years of Dr. Morrison, the physician, and you just look at the evaluative ratings from the three different districts, they're all consistently quite high. Not, not perfect, but, but excellent. You know, very, very strong uh, across all districts. Um, and, you know, when I think about the, the qualitative personal characteristics that Dr. Morris has, um, people have spoken more eloquently than I can about, about those. But, you know, a couple of things that, that strike me is um, uh, just someone, someone that we can work with. I mean, this is ultimately not just a flying kite academic position. This is a, this is a, a pragmatic get things done kind of position, right? And so you need someone who is able to work with school committees, someone who's able to work with teachers, someone who's able to work with the community. And I, I just love that pragmatism uh, about Dr. Morris. Um, so I think when we find someone who de has demonstrated the ability to do that, uh, it's, it's an opportunity. It's, it's an uncommon opportunity for us to se secure leadership uh, for the district, which ultimately benefits the students. And so I, I also enthusiastically uh, support this contract. Um. Ms. Ardern. So I, uh, <laughs> I also want to echo, um, I think, what my colleagues have said. Um, I think, you know, uh, the things that I've been impressed with with Dr. Morris has been that he embraces change when needed, um, but as has been previously said, uh, doesn't rush us along without making sure that all of the educational uh, and um, social, frankly, and fiscal responsibilities are there when we're considering those kinds of changes. Um, he's very well respected in our community. I have had numerous uh, people that I, I don't even know come to me to say, you know, really appreciate the open door policy that Dr. Morris has. And any little question sent via email gets a response within the day. Um, and so I think also the reputation that he has developed across the state uh, serves us very well. Um, there's a lot of people, you know, from Boston all the way through Western Massachusetts that repeatedly look to Dr. Morris uh, because of his leadership and his expertise in education um, and the work that he has done. So that is a reputation that is very difficult to match um, here in, you know, in, in our community, but in any community, really. Mm -hmm. And so I think this contract actually speaks to our level of faith in this superintendent, uh, as well as our desire to maintain that stability and leadership, which we have talked quite a bit about in this committee. Um, how do we maintain you know, a level of leadership when there is so much change and when there's been so many different things in flux over the past few years? And I think it's no secret that over the you know, past 10 or 15 years, this district has gone through a lot of changes. <laughs> um, and that's difficult to, you know, to, to maintain uh, and to, to make sure that our teachers are well taken care of, that our students are well taken care of, and that our community feels uh, you know, that they have a district that is worth supporting and worth coming to. So for all of those reasons, I think it's incredibly important for us to have negotiated uh, the contract that we have. I also want to just say that um, I'm proud of this contract because it continues a tradition of fiscal responsibility. Um, we were very careful to discuss both you know, uh, current salaries for other people holding similar positions uh, here in Western Massachusetts and you know, in other na neighboring communities so that we are not out of step with what is uh, you know, given by communities to their superintendents. And so I feel good about what we've negotiated here. Um, I also want to say that I think that there's a couple things from a previous contract that have carried over, like the arbitration clause, which helps ensure that we don't get ourselves into a situation uh, where if a, a future school committee in our community, our community uh, ends up having a difference of opinion from the superintendent, that we actually have a way out that doesn't immediately resort to you know, a lawsuit or something negative. Right? Not to say that I ever think that that would happen here, but it's great to know that we have something in place that can uh, protect this community in that way. And then I think the salary increases that we've negotiated in here are also very well within reason um, and you know, basically are bringing up the superintendent to a level of, of uh, compensation that, again, you know, is competitive but is not beyond our, our, um, our you know, economic uh, ability to pay. So for all of those reasons, I'm, I, I think this is a good contract and fully endorse it. I will also fully endorse the contract, and I'd just like to say that um, many of the reasons have already been stated, but there are a few that actually haven't been, and, and what I'm really excited about right now is that we're transitioning from a time when I think 
often things were more reactive and I think we've become more proactive. We now have um, a strategic plan for the high school. Um, we have a new bilingual education program that I'm really excited about and, and to have Dr. Morris continue to lead that um, at, at Fort River. Um, the school building project, I, I can't you know not mention that. I, I don't know if we'd be where we are today without um, Dr. Morris's leadership. So the idea of having consistent leadership through all of these initiatives, and, and there are many I didn't mention, um, is really important. And I don't think we're likely to find anybody else who's been such a long-term member of our community and who has, you know, gone through both being a teacher um, to being, you know, the, the leader of the district. And that really matters a lot. I think it's part of the reason that we've been able to be so successful. Um, and nobody's perfect. And I've seen um, Dr. Morris really welcome feedback and kind of own up to any um, mistakes and then move forward in a really pr proactive and productive way. So I just want to say um, thank you to everybody who's been involved in negotiating it, Doc, um, Mr. Demling and Mr. Nakajima, who's not here, but also to Dr. Morris, and uh, thank you. Being last and you're always going to I'm just going to pass. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with that, is there, does anybody who went first have anything they want to add? Well, I was before? just, after listening to all these things, I know it's not possible, but if I could have my way, I wish we could vote tonight in the affirmative, <laughs> but I know it's not possible. Mr. Demling? Yeah, so I just thought we should probably mention, so we have a meeting scheduled for the 23rd, do you want to? Yes, it was just posted, I think, this afternoon. Yeah. So we, we have a meeting on Monday next week where we will uh, continue to discuss and, and possible vote is, is, I think, the single agenda item. Any more questions, comments? Ms. Ardonis? I'm just wondering if Dr. Morris has any comments or thoughts that he'd like to add. <laughs> yeah. You to say that. Um, <laughs> not to put you on the spot. No, um, I think I'll probably hold on uh, comments for the 23rd, um, but I, I do want to say um, thank you for your kind words. It's, uh, and you've been through this before. It's not my, uh, you know, I'm awkward in these moments, so I'll live in, in, that, in, that, in that awkwardness, but I really do appreciate it, and I do think that in terms of the progress we've made and the progress that we have to go, that it really comes from school committee and superintendent. And I'm going to generalize this. I know it's an awkward thing to do, but I think it, it feels right to me that it comes from school committees and superintendents who figure out ways to work together, uh, even when there's disagreements, even when there's, you know, intense disagreements, can figure out ways to work together for the betterment of the students um, and the community. And as you're the elected officials from the four member communities, and so I take that role very seriously. I mean, it came up actually in the grade span advisory in my head. I didn't necessarily say it today, but one of the things that, that's been great for me is to be able to partner with uh, school committees um, that are deeply interested in community engagement, that are deeply interested in representing their communities, and deeply interested in understanding how um, their constituents feel and bringing those concerns to me uh, as well as to the public. And so I feel fortunate about that because I think the whole operation doesn't work if, if that's not in place, if the school committees aren't interested in bringing forward, forward um, thoughts, concerns, and, um, and being able to talk about things that are hard to talk about. And I think you all have, um, have been very comfortable to do some uncomfortable things uh, as it regards to that, whether it's been past conflict a couple of times. People mentioned school building project. That certainly is something that... Uh, was a very hard issue for one of the member towns um, and, and, and still resonates in the member town uh, in Amherst. And so being able to engage in that issue in a non-defensive way and really you know, welcome constituent feedback, even if it's from folks who may have disagreed in the past, I think that, that sets the model for the community too as elected officials. So I take your kind words very seriously and to heart and I'm deeply appreciative, but I also want to make sure that that's reflected that that it's about the partnership. Uh, partnership doesn't mean agreement at all times. Partnership means genuinely wanting to work together to improve the experience of the students in our districts. And so I want to thank you for that as well. Thanks. Do you want to? Is there a motion to adjourn Union 26? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, 
All those in favor of adjourning Union 26, please raise your hand, signifying aye, and it is unanimous. Yeah, yeah. Union 26 is <laughs> adjourned. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Sure, I was just like... <laughs> region, region continues. Region, region will continue now with our uh, first region-only topic, which is warrant review. Um, and is that Mr. Fonch? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to try real hard not to embarrass myself because... Um, all of these warrants come in like three parts. Okay. Uh, there's three individuals who are responsible for these <coughs> warrants. And so um, it seems to me that maybe the best way to proceed is to distribute the warrants that each individual is responsible for. So I'm going to give you these. Do you recall those? Yes, I reported already. Did you report these? I okay. did. All right, I'll yes. take them away. So you don't have uh, to do those. Quickly. Um, and then um, Ms. Spitzer has some as well. I do. Um, and I'm just going to interrupt because yeah. some of you weren't, weren't here at the early part, but um, Amherst Media had asked us to be, um, be very clear in speaking into the microphones because um, with the live stream, it, uh, if we're not speaking like close to the microphone or directly to the microphone, then it's um, difficult to hear on TV. So I was called in to sign some warrants and did not benefit from much instruction on how to report them out. So I'm going to do my best, unless if anybody has guidance to offer. Dr. Morris? So I think the guidance we received from legal counsel was to share the total warrant amounts in categories of, and I don't have it in front of me, payroll. Um, yeah, it wasn't to go through each individual warrant. It was to do a summary accounting of the total within certain Bands. I'm just making sure I'm, I'm so looking at school members to make sure. Yeah, and it would take me a moment to do the calculations. Mr. Menino? Now, would you remind me what process is being pursued right now, reporting out? What is this a new process? Um. I, I can speak oh, to Ms. that. Spencer, yeah. Um, yes, we were informed that the way we were signing warrants was not appropriate. And um, I actually was the first one to start. We, I was appointed to go in and sign all of the warrants, but, but I cannot do the salary warrants. And so Mr. Fonch volunteered to take over the signing of the warrants. And there we did have a little form that we could use to plug in the numbers. Um, but I think it was, we were advised, I think, that what we were doing was not the, what we should be doing. I'm going to check with Mr. Mangano. Could we take a Madam Chair? Could we just take a Could I? Uh, Mr. Funch? Uh, if I may, um, part of the problems, I think, are A, um, unfortunately, because of some health reasons, I had to miss a number of Fridays. And so the fact that a number of people are involved in this, I think, is sort of unfortunately complicating this. Mm. Secondly, um, I don't think that, um, I, from the last time I was on the school committee, I. Forgive me, I don't recall exactly the, the procedure for identifying what information needs to go into the minutes. Um, so I'll just try my best to do that. Unfortunately, some of these warrants that I signed, I don't know about over there, but they don't have um, the fund. Unless, it's, unless you're talking about general fund or revolving fund, is that what you're referring to? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yeah. Morris? Yeah, so, I mean, if this is something that, I just wonder if we could table this um, mm -hmm. since they've been signed yeah. and bring it back to the January. The, the meeting for Monday has already been posted, but bring it back to the first January meeting. Um, and I can work with, I think Mr. Mangano was trying to organize something, but maybe it didn't get into your inbox uh, for today. Um, I think it, it might have went to Mr. Fonch, uh, I believe, um, this afternoon. Um, so instead of people calculating live, I mean, I think we could come back in January if the committee agrees to that. Mm -hmm. People nodding heads? Yeah. Mr. Menino? And at that meeting, could you describe the purpose of reporting out, which is going on here? I think either myself yep. or a committee member who is responsible for that might be able to do Ms. that. Ms. Yeah, I think uh, Chair Nakajima had actually reported that. You may not have been at that meeting, Mr. Menino, but it is um, basically the, the, you know, the responsibility of the person who is uh, signing and, and signing the warrants 
that has been appointed by the, the committee, it's their responsibility to provide sort of subtotals of the, you know, the different warrants that have been signed at every meeting. So when we have meetings, it's basically just, you know, calculating um, all the subtotals of each one of those different categories mm -hmm. and then reporting that out so that it can be part of the Just minutes. reporting subtotals. Just reporting it mm -hmm. out. Yeah, absolutely. And different committees use different methods. So some committees, uh, including the Amherst School Committee, is doing the entire committee itself will be reviewing and reporting those subtotals. Uh, here for this regional district uh, committee, we are we appointed one person, that, and that work has been done by a couple of people this time. Mr. Fouch. Oh, yeah, just a question. Um, so if um, a warrant covers two or more funds or um, <coughs> areas, there should be a total of all of those areas, correct? These are, so, these are the categories. Yeah, I understand that. I just want, and there should be a total amount. Yeah, so the, the business office should be organizing and arranging and okay. sending you those so that you're not um, adding specifically. Um, <laughs> because yeah. it, there are times, to your point, that there are multiple fund sources for a topic. Um, and I apologize. I, I thought that got sent out this afternoon, but it may not have gotten uh, well, to you. Well, some, some were yeah. sent, but they still don't have the total amount. No, the totals, I mean. Uh, there was an intent to send that to you oh. um, so that you're not totaling live, totaling in general. I mean, just, you can <laughs> check the totals, but that it's not a committee member's job to, to literally be adding those pieces more just to confirm. Especially so. since you would get different totals if you edit it more than once. Yeah. Likely. <laughs> Um, so okay. I think so we, we can come back in January, and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll confirm yep. those numbers. So I apologize Thank for you, that. Thank you, Dr. Morris. I yeah. just don't have enough fingers to count. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll, move that, we'll note that we'll move that topic to our January meeting, or include these warrants on that topic on the January meeting. Um, uh, I think that's it. So we have a motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Second and by, moved by Ordonez, second by Stancer. All those in favor? And it's unanimous. Yay! Thank you all. Oh.